Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jesse Plants. We need you to subscribe to YouTube by clicking and hitting the bell. If you click and hit the bell, you'll know when we're there. That's YouTube. Click and hit the bell. So if you've got your Bibles, I like the old King James Version. I want to read it, and then I'm a, we're going to deal with this particular passage or this uh, sermon the Lord has given us. It says, To the elder and to the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. What truth? We're going to deal with that in just a minute. You got to understand this about the New Testament. New Testament, if you want to define it in one word, is correspondence. These people are writing to the churches that they have established and different things. God made it holy canon. So in John's mind, he's writing to Gaius, but in God's mind, he's writing the covenant church. Amen. He's writing to you. You can put your name in it. Amen. Gaius was his friend. You can put whatever your name is to my beloved, whatever your name is. See, in whom, I, I love that, whom I love in the truth, verse 2, beloved, I wish above how many things? All. How many things? All. How many things? Now, it don't get no better than that, does it? All is a very small word with a big compass in it. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Everybody say prosper. prosper. Say prosper. prosper. Okay, say prosper again. Prosper. For you that don't believe in that, there it is right there. <laughs> Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. So they work together very well. Even as your soul, the mind, the will, and the emotion prospereth. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. What truth? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou prosper. He was such a blessing, this man gave us. He received everybody in the church. He was a wonderful man. I mean, he, he, he blessed them spiritually, physically, financially. When you saw him, you knew something was good going to happen. He was walking in that truth. You can find that same truth in 2 John and also in 1 John. Look at this. For I, verse 3, For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. What truth? What truth? Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. Because then you are a light in a dark place everywhere you go, spiritually, physically, financially. You should not have financial trouble. You should not have sickness trouble. You shouldn't have any of that. See, when you're walking in truth, yeah, but that's the problem. You need to get your butt out the way. There are no conjunctions in God. He means what he says and says what he means. I want to read that again, that, that, that verse right there. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, uh, and I want you to see that is just so amazing to me. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brother and to strangers. I notice that. Let me read verse 4 again. I have no greater joy than to know here that my children walk in truth. Verse 5. Beloved, this is the generosity of Gaius. He's a giver. Not only of finance and money, but of time, of love. When you see him, you see Christ in him, the hope of glory. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and the strangers. And the strangers. And the strangers. In other words, you have to be just as nice to strangers as you are to Christians. As you heard me say thousands of times, the only Jesus and people may ever see is the Jesus in you or the Jesus in me. I had a wonderful compliment this Saturday. I, uh, uh, Friday, I think it was. Friday. We went down to Mr. B's. Was it Friday? I think Friday or Saturday. I can't remember which one it was. Friday. And we had a little lunch down there. And we got there a little early. So Kathy said, let's walk the street a little bit. That's Royal Street. We like, we like that street. So as we were walking, I said, she said, let's go into French Antique. And I bought a lot of things there over the years. And the owner of it had passed away, Mr. Gagne, a real precious man, Jewish man. He was 84 years old, went home to be at the Lord. Well, his nephew runs it, named Mark. Well, anyway, you know, so we walked in, we're looking around. We bought a lot of things and decorated the home, blah, blah. We love French furniture, you know. We're French people, you know, with a little of everything else in it. We could be Italian. We may even be black. We don't know. <laughs> but we don't really care. It doesn't make no We're just glad we're here. Well, anyway, glory to God. We walk in, and this man and his wife walks in. Watch this now. You got to understand, that people are always watching you. You're always in sight of someone, somewhere, somehow. So they, this man walks in, he says, Honey, you know who this man is? And the lady's just looking, and he said, This is a very famous man. This is a very famous man. So I'm looking around. Who, who, who's in here? Who's famous? He said, no, you, you Brother Jesse, aren't you? Jesse. I said, yes, I am. That's a very famous man. I said, no, I'm not. It's the Christ in me that's famous. Amen. Wasn't trying to be humble. Just telling the truth. 
And I was real nice to him. I said, what's your name? And, I, and he gave me his name and her name. We had a little, a little conversation. And they said, and, and, but Mark, who is the owner, was listening. Well, they walked out. You know, we walked in. And he said, you, have, you are so kind to people. He said, you've been coming here for years. He said, me and my uncle would always talk about that Reverend DePlante is so kind to people. We've been watching you all these years. We want to do what you do. And I looked at him, I said, and you're Jewish people. And I said, well, thank you, Mark. That's very kind of you to say that. No, but you said, you take time. You, were, you, you know, you're very kind to people, things of that nature. I said, well, thank you. He said, I want to do that for anybody walks in here. Even people don't, that you, know, they may not know you, you walk and go, hello, how you doing? You're, you're just nice. I want, I, I, I'm learning that, and I'm learning that from you. Ah. See, that's walking in a truth. For God so loved. Ah. Okay. So whilst we walked out, went to another, uh, whilst we're waiting on for the, the restaurant to open up, went to another store there. What's the name of that store? Harris. Harris. Now here comes another man and his wife. They're from Bogota, Colombia. Now I preached in Bogota. I preached at the convention center there, blessing them. And he was just telling me about this and that and all that. And really, I was very nice to him. And, and now the owner says, you know, you are so kind. I said, well, what do you want me to do? Slap people when they come in? Here? <laughs> Why does people freak out when someone is polite and kind? Because they don't see it very often. You see what I'm trying to say? This is what John is talking about Gaius. Gaius is one fine man. Now, you know, if he's a fine man, his family is a fine man. Fine people, you know. Watch this. So I want to read with you. Let me read that verse uh, 5 again. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, which have borne witness of thy love, or charity means love, before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well, because that for his name's sake they went forth taking nothing of the Gentile. So Gaius would say, listen, I'm, I'm going to bless you. I'll feed you. I'll do whatever I can. Watch this. We therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellowshippers to the truth. Think about that. Isn't that something? I mean, he's saying, hey, all of us do this. Now, there's always a thorn in the bush. There's always somebody in the church who started out well. They started out as a rose and wound up as a thorn. Why? It's going to tell you this. I wrote unto the church, verse 9, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence, that means everybody got to recognize who he is. Who loveth to have the preeminence among them receiveth us not. Now here's the founder of the church. Evidently at one time this man, Diotrephes, was a very nice man. He was a leader, an elder, may have been a pastor. But then all of a sudden a proud look began to take him over. I've had that happen here. I've had previous pastors, not, not, not your David, I'll say that to help you out. Would say they'd get mad when people, when I, uh, uh, they would get mad when I'd walk in. Everybody would run up to him. Hey, but just they didn't see me in a while. See what I'm saying? They say, well, well, why, 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 did, why did they notice him? Well, fool, I built the place. You see what I'm saying? Because you know, that's just so stupid. That's a proud look. That's the beginning of great trouble in someone's life. You see what I'm saying? And, I, 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 oh, yeah, I've had him happen. They say, oh, yeah, they show him such, what, 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 my, he, I was paying him. My name was on his check. But you see, when you get prideful, you get blind as a bat. Why? Because the only person you can see is yourself. You see that? That's diatrophic. He started out good, but he wants preeminence. I, I want y'all to know who I am. We had one person here who said, I don't get enough camera time. <laughs> he ain't here no more. Me, I don't particularly care for the camera on me because sometimes you got this itch you want to scratch, but you can't <laughs> because the world's watching you. You never thought of that, did you? See, if you want to pick your nose, nobody's going to, I'm going to see it, but no one else will because I'm looking at you. <laughs> So watch this, Diotrephes is his name. I think I said say his name. I wrote it to the church, verse 9, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the premise among, among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, pr prating against us. So he was saying very ugly words about the apostle John. Against us with malicious words, and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brother. He wouldn't have anybody else. And forbidden them that would. In other words, if you was nice to somebody and next day, he'd get mad about that. 
and casted them out of the church. So he figured he would use the authority. Why don't you just leave, leave the church? Because he wanted total power. John writes this, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God. Well, praise the Lord. But he that doeth evil hath not seen God. Now watch this. I like verse 12 because we find another nice guy. Demetrius hath good report of all men. Everybody like Demetrius, just like they like Gaius. And of the truth itself. Why? He's walking in that truth. Yea, and we also bear record. And you know that our record is true. In other words, he said, I honor Demetrius. Then he says this in verse 13. I had many things to write, but I will not with ink and pen write unto thee. But I trust I shall shortly see thee. And we shall speak face to face. Peace be to thee. Our friends salute thee. Greet the friends by name. In other words, you ought to know them. I want to talk this morning about the two kinds of Christians that's in churches. There's the good kind and there's the bad kind. Don't look around here. Don't spot nobody. He'll put your eye on someone. The Gaiuses and the Demetrius, wonderful people. Diotrephes was a wonderful person until pride took him over. Let me take it even further than that. Lucifer was a wonderful cherub. He was a worship angel. Walked amongst the stones of fire. When he walked, music came from his body. Tabrets were put in him. That's why everybody noticed him. What a creation God created. See, God created Lucifer. Lucifer created Satan. But a pride came upon him because he wanted preeminence. You see, and he did not stop that. Look, the Bible says six things the Lord hate. And the seventh is an abomination. One of those six things is a proud look. Not just being prideful, but a proud look. I, I know some ministers, they, they got that look like, let me bless you with my presence. You could have stayed home, sucker. I didn't need to know who you are. You know what I'm trying to say? I want to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the good person. Now, I want you to write these points down because I believe it will help you here to be what you're supposed to be. See, we walk in truth that either Jesus comes or we go by the way of the grave. So write this down. A true Christian, excuse me, true Christianity is not only a helper in the church, but must be also a lover of the brethren, even if they are strangers. Let me say this again. True Christianity is not only a helper in the church, people, you know, volunteering and stuff, but must be also a lover of the brother. In other words, you love everybody. Even if they are strangers. Doesn't make no difference. You don't know them. Have you ever went to a church and nobody ever went up to you? Has, no one, has anybody ever had that happen? They wouldn't say hello, goodbye, go to hell, something, something. I don't mean that to be rude. That's just the truth. You take anything. They just look at you like, That's not true Christianity. That's not truth. That's not walking in the truth. Let me say it again. True Christians or true Christianity is not only a helper in the church, but must be also a lover of the brother. Now, Gaius and Demetrius was like that. Even if they are strangers, when people walk in, hey, thank you for coming. You honor us today. I hope, what can we do for you? I remember when I wasn't saved. Kathy got saved about, about two years before I did. I think it was a year and a half, two years, something like that. And... Uh, we were in, uh, where's that, Binghamton, New York. Because she told me about this, Betty. I didn't know. You know, I never went to church. I mean, you know, I went to church when I got married, and I didn't like it, so I never went back. <laughs> I did go one time, and I cussed out the pastor, and I certainly didn't go back again. I was crazy in them days. But Kathy and Jody, every time we went to a city, she would find a church. I would maybe do four to six weeks. You know, uh, I was a rocker, you know, playing these different places and things of that nature. So to make a long story short, this particular church, Kathy really liked it because as soon as she walked in with Jody, Jody must have been, what, two years old, I guess? Something like that. I don't know, a year and a half, two years old, something like that. They saw Kathy and walked in and said, thank you for coming to our church. I don't know if Kathy said, well, you know, we're, my, we're, we're working here for just a few weeks. And they noticed Jody said, oh, let me sit you with a, with a family that has the same uh, child like you have. Am I correct? Girls. Uh, what's that? Not the girls. I was a girl then. Yeah, she was a girl then. <laughs> I, I don't understand what you're saying. 
Okay, girls. Okay, yeah, but they know you're a girl, okay? They just look at your hair. Praise God. We understand that. We ain't, we ain't dealing with gender here. Let's, it's my sermon. Just listen. It's my sermon. Just listen. They brought her. No, I didn't ask you. You just jumped, you jammed in there. But she will do it, you know. When you've been married 51 years, you know. Okay. So what? They brought her to, to, a, to a girl's that were the same age as she was, with the same child, kind of, so she could be comfortable in their midst. That was a very wonderful thing. And she was a stranger. Now, when I played music, when I worked the big, big clubs, people like Vegas and all that kind of stuff, I remember they would rent uh, big, huge rooms and have Christian things going on. All right? Now, I might be playing the, uh, uh, you know, the lounge or the, or, the, or the big room or whatever, and they might be having a big Christian event going on, you know, because they got a lot of huge uh, hotels with a lot of space, you know. And, I, and we used to uh, pause. We'd say, we're going to pause for the cause because the cause causes the pause. We'll be back in about 20 minutes. Dun, 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 dun. Walk off. Now, here, if anybody needed to get saved, I did because you had to see the way I look. I mean, I got the hair. I got the embroidery jeans. I got a, a, a glass of whiskey in my hand, all kinds of stuff. They would walk by with those little name tags, Christian with the cross on them. Not one person in my whole history of playing music of a witness to me, other than Kathy and my mother. Not one. If anybody needed Jesus, I did. You think they cared? No. They just walked by. I'm glad they did. But where was the light? Where was the truth? You know, I would have listened. Because even when I was a sinner, I was nice until you said something you shouldn't have said. Now, if you talked about your religion, I didn't get mad about that. Now, you cuss me, man, you got a fight on your hand. And I don't care. I wasn't big enough to whip nobody, but a truck, a car, a baseball bat, a gun, and a knife will do a lot of damage. That's just the way it was back in them days. See, when people would walk in the church, Gaius would come up to them. Demetrius would come up to them and say, hey, let me welcome you. Thank you for coming. Why, isn't that amazing? Mm. Write this down. Your practical life must be in harmony with your professed creed. Your practical life must be in harmony with your professed creed. In other words, if you believe in love, you ought to exhibit love. If you believe in patience, you ought to exhibit patience. If you believe in healing, you ought to be well, healthy. If you believe in prosperity, you ought to be wealthy. I lost a few of you right there. <laughs> because, see, you've been taught for 2,000 years that's not right. When they're wrong and you're right, you see... In other words, your, your, your spirit should be a part of what you believe. Let me say it again. Your practical life must be in harmony with your professed creed. I had a friend of mine not long ago say, you know, I was watching you on television. I didn't know you spoke in tongues. I said, you want to hear some more? Uh, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I just start praying in the Holy Ghost. I can, I can turn the Holy Ghost switch in a second. Amen. I ain't got no problem. I don't care if I'm in public. Well, because that's my professed creed. Well, I didn't care if I cuss in public when I was a sinner. I didn't care if I sinned in public. Ain't nobody, you know, why should I care if I let the love of God come out of my life in public? Amen. See, that's being practical and producing your professed creed. Yes, that's what it means to be a good Christian. Amen. See, write this down. If we are not in Christ, we're not in church. Amen. I'm going to add that to that point. Your practical life must be in harmony with your professed creed, because if you are not in Christ, you're not in church. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You think I just go to church on Sunday? I go to church every day. Morning, noon, and night, I carry church with me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Glory to God. And what a blessing that is to flow like that and to understand that. You see, because I want people to know, not, they don't need to know Jesse, because you can forget him. But the Christ that's in me, you can never forget. You see? But I'm going to tell you something sounds arrogant. Whenever you see Jesus, you're going to see Jesse. Come on. Both our names start with a J. 
You can call us JJ if you want, praise God. Because <laughs> we close. We got fellowship. You understand? Hello, Jesus. Hi, Jesse. We enjoy each other. It's a blessing. Let me say it again. Your practical life must be in harmony with your professed creed or what you believe. If we are, if we are not in church, we are, if we are not in Christ, we are not in church. Amen. That's so true. Now, you see, I, have, I realize that people watch me, not because I'm on television, because, see, if you're a light, you always see a light in a dark place. You're going to notice light in darkness because light and darkness don't mix. Write this down. We must hold the truth concerning the person and work of Jesus Christ. You must hold that truth concerning the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Good works are the evidence of godliness. See, good works are the evidence of godliness. We must, let me say it again, we must hold the truth concerning the personal, the person and work of Jesus Christ. And good works are the evidence of godliness. Now, you know, when people come in, that's why I named it Covenant Church. When Kathy said, the Lord told us to build a church. I said, he ain't tell me. She said, I'm a traveler. I travel all the time. She said, you just ain't listening. Listen now. He just told you. I said, is his name Kathy? <laughs> yes, she was right. I didn't want to build a church. I wanted to build a chapel, a small chapel for my staff. And I would invite guests to come, you know, friends of mine, come speak to my uh, staff. I, I'll bless you with a great offering. Uh, take you around New Orleans, get you some good food, blah, blah, and forget about all that. You go to the church you want here, because, you know, church is a trouble. Am I t How many of you people have seen trouble in church? Oh, yeah, no. Come on, you know what I'm talking about? Because they're a bunch of di diatrophies. How do you say that name? Diatrophies? Let's call him Big D. Diatrophies, whatever his name. See? And you, it just gets irritating. But it's so refreshing when you walk into a church and somebody notices you and they say, hello, thanks for coming today. Is there anything we can do for you? There's just something nice about that, isn't it? Yeah. Why? Because that's Christ in you. That's the person of Christ and what he spoke and what he believes. That's the creed. And the practical life should go together. I mean, you, you ought to be able to put a razor blade between the two. Because of the closeness of that. So we must hold the truth, the truth concerning the person and work of Jesus Christ. Good works are the evidence of godliness. This is a godly place. It is. It really is. Uh, when you look, you can sense God is permeated in, in the drywall, in the carpet. Do you know I was criticized for this carpet? You know what they said? They said, now, that's just too expensive to put in the church. That ought to go to the Ritz-Carlton. Let me just give you my, my, my statement. Yo, mama, the Ritz-Carlton, that's a piece of trash compared to God's house. But that's just a lot of money. You can never spend too much money on God's house. Now, some of you, you don't believe that because you know why you ain't been to heaven and it look like you ain't going anyway. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Listen to me here. When you get to heaven, you, this here, this is poverty. When you walk in heaven, you're walking on transparent gold. Yeah. Ooh, look, you want to see color? You want to see red? You ain't never seen red till you see it in heaven and blue and purple and green. Oh, my God. Pearly gates so big, knock your socks off. Foundations of diamond, barrel, jasper, onyx, ruby. Ruby. Big rubies. And the Bible says in Ephesians 5, 1, be ye therefore imitators of God. That's in his work, his works, everything. It's called excellence. You won't go anywhere in heaven where there's paint peeling. Long grass, weeds, no weeds. You ready for this? No dust. None. You got to go. So when I built this, I said, no, I'm putting this. I, I forget the person said, but you know, the, the guy, do you know how much this costs, Reverend? I said, are you paying for it? He said, no, sir. I said, I am. Order it. 
Now, this thing is over 20-something years old. It looks like it was put yesterday. And I thank God that's because of my maintenance staff. We take care of God's house. It's called infrastructure. What's that guy? See, see how she, I have to go over and see. See, she wants to talk when I'm preaching. Housekeeping too. I ain't finished yet, Kathy. Just let me keep going. I'll get there. <laughs> she want to make sure I recognize everybody. Housekeeping. Keeping house. Hey, hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? Because they do just a fine job. So we look around and we see a little rust part. We start fixing things. I've had people say, God, look like you built this thing two years ago or a year ago. Well, there's some things that, you know, we try to get there as fast as we can. And God just blesses his place. We're supposed to. It's a representative. Everything we do, whether it's spiritual, physical, or financial, is a representation of who Christ is, the hope of glory. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. That's St. John 14, verses uh, 13, and then 14, uh, verse 12, 13, and 14. Write this down. It is possible to be in a church, yet not in the church. There are a lot of people today looking at me, all, you know, watching all over the world. Put me on this camera here. Thank you. You're in a church, but you're not in the church. Thank God that we can stream today that some people can get in the church. But let me help all you that are sitting on your butt, and you should be here. Because <laughs> you're worried about that COVID. You mean to tell me the COVID-19? What about COVID-6? Ever heard of him? COVID-7, COVID-8, COVID-9. There's all different ones. But greater is he who is in you than he is in COVID. You understand? Well, it's supposed to be caught it and die. You go to heaven. What's wrong with that? Now, you see, that just makes no sense at all. The Bible said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. Some of you need to open your churches. You need to. It's not a church thing. It's a God thing. Thank God that we can stream live. It's called live and stream, stream, whatever you call that crazy, live stuff. That's great. But what's happening right now, right now, let me just say, this couple is pushing anointing to Daryl and his wife. Push, you pulling from him. You pulling from her. She's pulling from you. This corporate anointing, bam, it's hitting you. Bam, bam, bam. It's going all over. And you're just doing this. The anointing is way stronger physically here. Thank God it goes through the camera. Thank God that it does. That's why Jesus said, forsake not the ascending of yourselves. You see what I'm saying? That's why we never shut anything down. And, and we knew they said, don't come. So I just preached to the camera, you know, at second best. Think about that for a minute. See, that's the kind of Christian you should be. That's God's house. This is the day the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. See what I'm saying? Instead of saying, well, I'll tell you what, I wish I'd have church on Sunday. I could sleep longer. You know you can sleep better on Sunday. The best nap you'll ever receive this week is this afternoon. Sunday naps are just wonderful. You know why? It's a day of rest. A rest from the world, not a rest from God. See, the Lord rested on the seventh day, not because he was tired, it's because he was finished. Do you see that? Ha. Ah, so it's possible to be in a church, yet not in the church. Oh, should I do that, Lord? Yes. I'm going to use this couple as my example. They used to be at a church. Am I right? Not being critical, just being truthful. No, nobody said hello, goodbye, nothing. Am I correct? Now, God didn't just tell me that. We, we talked to them just a little bit. But since they've been here, I saw all I ever see them is smiling. Because when you walk in this place, you go, hey, buddy, how you doing, man? Hey, what can we do for you? You know, you meet Pastor Ron, hey, man, I preach so hot I can fry eggs at the men's ministry. <laughs> Pray that. That's good. It's a blessing, right? Yeah. Hmm. Well, what about you, sir? Y'all just got here, too. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. I, what's your name? Mike. Hey, Mike, Jesse the Plants. How you doing? You, I have no germs. You can shake my hand. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. How you doing, sweetheart? Good I'm going to wipe my hands all over you. <laughs> no, no. I, just, I have no germs. I'm all right. Praise the Lord. See what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? Feel good here, don't you? Why? We have no malice here. Right. We have no strife here. Yeah. All right. You ready for this? We have no sin here. 
Somebody shout, listen to me. That's what John is talking about, about Gaius and Demetrius. Now, Satan always plants something, and he does it through pride. Sometimes you lift people up, and it goes to their head. Then it blows their head off. I have some spiritual sons of all nationality, color, and creed. And one of my great sons, and I'll just say it, was Steve, it's Steve Allen. I like Steve. Got a great church. He's a blessing. He couldn't get over how I treated him. He said, you know, I feel like the Lord would have you be my spiritual father. Uh, in Houston's, many, many years ago. I said, and the Lord said, receive him. Now, I'm going to say something. He knows that's what I'm going to say. Uh, and he, he just couldn't get over how nice. So I said, what can I do for you? What? You mean, what can I do for you? No, no. I'm the dad. So I make jokes. I said, I had Steve when I was 12. <laughs> you make a joke like that. Now, watch this. I said, Steve, the reason why you don't understand my spiritual father in this is because you never had one. You had a master. You do what I tell you to do or shut up. And with everything going wrong, when houses are being blown away and floods are coming through Hurricane Katrina, make sure you give me them tide. I'm just being honest here. Now, if that makes somebody mad, you need to get mad. Because your name may start with a D. See, I'm about ready to get to that part now. You see, now it's very prevalent in the church, diatrophies. Why? Why? Because where is the perfect places on the planet? Churches. Satan is trying to infect that and shut it down. You see what I'm saying? I mean, think about that. You can't sing because of the COVID. But you can breathe carbon dioxide. <laughs> Women, I see them breaking out. That's telling you something. Mm, mm. Let's keep preaching here. Our life is designed by God to make progress of spiritual things. You will be stronger today than you were yesterday. We're ever growing, ever increasing. Our life is designed by God to make progress of spiritual things. See, there are two kinds of Christians. Now, I'm, talk, I'm talking right now between, between Gaius and Demetrius. They're good. Our, our, our life is designed by God to make progress of spiritual things. So in other words, you ought to be stronger in healing, stronger in finance, stronger in everything you do. Why? Because you're growing daily instead of Sunday. You see what I'm saying? What a blessing that is. Why? Why do we preach faith so much? Faith is the thread of the fabric of God's clothes. This uh, sport coat is made up of threads. When it's put together by, a quote, some master, someone, it becomes a garment, but it has no life in it until I get in it or until you put it on. Right? In other words, there are a lot of churches that look like mannequins. They got nice clothes, but there's no life in it. It's, not, it's a church, not the church. I'm not being critical here, being truthful. I'm not criticizing anybody. You see, I have to tell people, see, for years I would never say anything against anyone anytime. Until I began to read the scripture and Jesus was standing in front of the Pharisee and the Sadducee. He said, you're a bunch of snakes, hypocrites, and vipers. Who? You can't misunderstand that. <laughs> this is Jesus talking. This is the son of the living God. He said, you're a snake. You're a hypocrite, you're a viper. I thought they certainly deserved it. Lord, move out the way. I'll slap them for you if you like me to. <laughs> but then he takes his disciples and goes into uh, up the mountain, and, and, and then he says this, beware of the leaven. A little leaven, leaven of the whole lump. He said, they're snakes, the hypocrites and vipers. I thought, now wait a minute here, Jesus. Excuse me. Excuse me. Aren't you talking bad about them behind their back? That makes sense, huh? Well, well, you know, is that, is that walking in love? Yes, it's called walking in truth. And the Lord gave me this statement that helped me greatly. He said, Jesse, you're not being critical. 
you're being truthful. If it's the truth, you can say it to someone's face. You can say it behind the back because the truth sets you free. See the difference? There's a vast difference there. See, you think you're talking bad. No, you're speaking the truth. You see what I'm saying? It's not being critical. You see, uh, gossip comes camouflaged as concern. You can tell that stuff. I don't, you hear this? I don't know if this is really real, but listen to this. Ah, now nah, you're being critical. But if it's truthful, you're not being critical. And if Jesus is the way, you can't get lost. And if he's the truth, you cannot be deceived. And if he's the life, the devil can't kill you. You see, he's not a truth or some truth. He is the truth. That's that walking in truth that, that John is talking about, Gaius and Demetrius. They picked up the spirit of Christ through the apostle John. Diotrephes had the same thing. He went well for a while. Who did hinder you? Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? There's one, I love, uh, uh, the cotton patch trend. They say, you dumb, stupid fish heads. What's your problem? <laughs> I think it's something like it. <laughs> you know, you can't misunderstand cotton patch, boy. I'll tell you something. Listen to me again. Faith is always a testimony to Christ's virtue and character in you. In you. Faith is always a testimony to Christ's virtue and character in you. See, you're thinking in Christ. No, no, in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So like I say it all the time, the only Jesus some people may ever see is the Jesus in you. Or the Jesus in me. Because the only way you're going to please God is through faith. Let me say it again. Faith is always a testimony to Christ's virtue and character in you. Huh. Now, see, that was Demetrius. That was Gaius. Can I be a blessing to you? You know, we didn't know we were doing Gaius's job and Demetrius' time when we first got saved. We went to a church called Terrebonne Full Gospel Church. Is that the name of it? Terrebonne Full Gospel Temple or something like that. Temple. So when they would have a guest speaker, and you got to understand something, ladies and gentlemen, I gave all my money away. I had a lot of money. I have been rich. <laughs> I have been filthy rich. Now I'm very super cleanly rich. <laughs> I ain't filthy no more. <laughs> <laughs> because when I work for the devil, I mean, he, oh, yeah. I, I gave all my money away because I thought, well, you know, you, can't, you, like, you got to be a Christian. You have to be poor. See, I believed the lie. I didn't know. I gave it away. And you know what? Through my giving, it blessed a lot of church and blessed a lot of people. It's a blessing. Well, two and a half years later, I, I became a normal person. What does that mean? That means like you. I financed the house. I mean, I mortgaged the house and financed the car. So I had notes, a house note, car note. And I had a good job. I was working with Shell Oil Company. And they really liked me. They called me the golden boy of Shell. That's it. That's exactly the truth. I mean, it's amazing. Boy, the Lord gave me favor and gave me intelligence on how to handle that job. Right. Make a long story short. I'm, I'm out in the front yard, going, on the side yard. And the Lord said, give me all your money. Now, let me tell you about giving all your money. I'm talking about taking Jody's piggy bank, flipping out the coins. Nothing. Zero. And I went, uh... Because the first thing came to my mind was this. Well, how am I going to pay this house note? How am I going to pay this car note? Ah, oh, but I got faith. I said, your will be done. And that's when I heard my Abraham call concerning finance. I walked in and Kathy said, let's do it, Jesse. I said, she's so innocent. Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> She believes that I'm going to take care of her, but she don't know she ain't going to have no food tonight if we do all this. You know, in my mind, I never said nothing because I always took care of Kathy, made sure. And I come walking on the side of the house and I heard this because it, it was King James. It was King James. It was like an Abraham thing. Jesse, because thou hast done this and not withheld from me everything that you have. I will bless you like you've never been blessed before in your life. You will do much greater than you've ever done as working for the devil. You better get ready. And from that day forward, the next day, prosperity began to hit me spiritually, physically, financially. Oh, God, man. And I thought, why? Well, get the goosebump and think about it. Lord Jesus, man. It was, and he's still doing it. So don't get mad at me. It ain't my fault. 
That's Deuteronomy 8, 18 working. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. To do what? To be a blessing. So when, they, when, when, when the guests would come, we'd say, uh, uh, we'd like to take y'all out to dinner if you want. You know, things of that nature. And, uh, you know, now, hey, we weren't going to no fancy places, but we, we took them. And it was so, we, we were actually doing Gaius and Demetrius' job, Kathy. We would bless them. Bless them the best we could. You know, it was for us, you know. And I never, once I got born again, money was no longer a, a, a big thing to me. You know, because it was the most disappointing thing ever happened in my life because I thought raised very poor, and if I could get a lot of money, I'd be very happy. And I got a lot of money at 21, 22 years old. And why? I said, I told Kathy, remember that in that hotel? Kathy, why am I not happy? She said, because you're going to hell, you ignorant fool. You, you, know, you, you, you devil from hell. You just, you drunk, drug head. I said, okay, enough's enough. But when I got Jesus in my life, greatest gift of a gift to me, better than Kathy. And Kathy is the next one. See, right there. But I'm telling you, then she gave me her grip, Jody. Boy, my gifts still keep coming. Then Jody gave me Meredith. Boy, I got a legacy. But when I was a sinner, I didn't have any of that. Because I didn't care about nobody. Tannis, I would not hold, I wouldn't push Jody down the street in a carriage. Uh-uh. That's not manly. I don't do that. Kathy, you do that. Kathy tried to hold my hand. Am I telling the truth? I'm proud of it. I don't do that. Craziness. See how Satan blind you? Missed a lot of things that I could have had. You know, I'm talking about infections. And, but I'm doing a lot better now. Say something, woman, for help me out here. <laughs> Come on, when I want you to jump in. When I don't want you to jump in, now you're wrong. <laughs> All right. Let's get on with this message here, praise God. Faith is always a testimony to Christ's virtue and character in you. Did y'all get that point down? Now, I'm going to deal with diatrophies. Whoo, you ready? Arrogance always leads to terrible extremes. Write that down. Arrogance always leads to terrible extremes. And look what it led Lucifer to do. Look what it led some of these ministers that stole people's money. Look what it led some of these priests to. Molest children. I was in Italy, ladies and gentlemen. God is my witness. I was preaching in Verona, Italy. Kathy was with me. I was doing a convention. Me and Jerry Savelle, we remember that? Me and Carolyn, we all flew over there. Je he said, Je Jesse, uh, uh, I'm having a conference. He said, would you come and help me preach it? This is Jerry. I said, where at? He said, uh, Verona, Italy. I said, w w w that close to Rome? Well, no. I said, is it close to Venice? He said, yes. He said, it's about, it's about 45 minutes uh, from Venice by car. And I thought, well, by plane, that's uh, 12 minutes, 16 minutes. I said, okay, I never stay. I preach, I fly out. I said, I, I'd like to go to Venice. I've seen it on television. He said, well, let's go. So I wound up preaching there. I heard this. I thought my ears, something went wrong with me. There was a person, and I think it's in the Boston Diocese. I'm not quite sure. One of the big dioceses. And they moved him to the Vatican. He was brilliant when it comes to finances. But he was a molester of children. I mean, a bunch of them. I mean, bad, okay? Now, I don't know about you. I was raised Christian Catholic. I never seen any of that. Did any of y'all ever see? I, don't, I never did. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not all Catholic priests are like that. So don't throw everybody in a bucket here. You see what I'm saying? You know, because I never seen it. Anybody? Am I, it, it, some of y'all would say, y'all never seen it either, right? I mean, it's just the truth. I mean, you know, hey. Well, to make a long story short, I turned the television on. And that was that guy. Now, you see, you got to understand this about the Catholic Church. The Vatican, that's a government. That's not just the church like we have. It's a government, which means you, you, no other government can go over there and do what they want to do. You know, you're crossing over into something different. And you know what that idiot said? And he's a complete idiot. He said, when I touch a child, I sanctify them. 
I went, what did, what did, what? Oh, I got so angry inside. I said, I, how do you get that bad? And he had to look like, when I touch a child, that's sexually not molesting. I sanctify them. I want to say, I'd like to touch you. <laughs> but you won't be sanctified. You'll be in pieces. <laughs> I couldn't believe somebody could say that. That calls himself a person of the cloth. What kind of cloth is that? That's a dirty rag. That's what that is. Isn't that sad? You ready? Arrogance always leads to terrible extremes. How does it happen? This point. The passion for notoriety. The desire to dominate. Let me say it again. The passion for notoriety. The desire to dominate are elements which work untold harm. Because it makes you, we say it in South Louisiana, it makes you think yourself. You see, like Kathy's mother, she got some great, we call them Irene-isms. Her name's Irene. She said, snakes crawl low. She said, it's easy to pick up trash and hard to get rid of it. I think she got that uh, definition about me. Because <laughs> I hated that woman and she hated me. And that's the truth. I mean, you know, but Kathy loved me. And I used that to hurt her if I could. I couldn't stand Kathy's mother. I mean, I said, my gosh, you're living another year? Better die. I, I mean, I would just, oh. But today, she wouldn't say neither way. We both got born again. That all changed. I mean, I, I enjoy being around Irene. She's a blessing of the Lord. I mean, she really is. You see, but when you're, when you're motivated by the devil, you're only going to think those bad thoughts. Let me say it again. The passion for notoriety, the desire to dominate, are elements which work untold harm. I've seen that in, um, in, in the ministry. I'll keep the name private. <laughs> this was a great man of God. I mean, he, Linda, he was a great man of God. I mean, I, I esteemed him. But I was around him. I mean, just a great man. I mean, you know, I couldn't believe the things I would hear. He had a wife that was wonderful who could speak better. And he said, there's only one king in this family. Everybody looks at me. I thought, my God, who do you think you are? See, that's wanting to dominate. See, a husband should never be a dominating, domineering factor. Help me out here, ladies. You see what I'm saying? Or keep the wife stuck in the back. Your job is to cook. Well, ain't nothing wrong with cooking. I don't have a problem with that. That's not the issue. Wait a minute. See, that's a passion for notoriety. Let me bless you with my presence. So I can dominate you. That's what slavery did. It dominated people. Oh, it's terrible. The passion for notoriety, the desire to dominate, are elements which work un untold harm. You see, now that was in this church that John uh, started. Right at this point now. You know abusers because they do not acknowledge authority. If you want to see that, you have people not acknowledging authority. You got problems on your hand. Everything has, everybody's got a boss. There's always a leader somewhere. Decisions have to be made. You see what I'm saying? But, you see, and you can tell when you begin to operate like diatrophy, you will not uh, recognize authority. Well, I know they said that. But who, who, no, you don't know they said that. You're already thinking about what you're going to say or what you said. Let me say it again. You know abusers because they, are, they do not acknowledge authority. So what happens? Well, the only thing that can happen, abuse. If you do not correct the abuses, the abusers will corrupt the minds of others. If you do not correct the abuses, the abusers will corrupt the mind of others. That's why some people left this church. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. I will never lie to you people. See, you have to, I don't like that. 
I just wish you'd take care of yourself. You know what I'm saying? Hey, let, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> but if you don't correct that abuse, it will corrupt other people. Put your kids in a wrong environment. Watch what will happen to them. Good kids. Good kids, right? Good grandkids. Good kids, just such a blessing. They become abusers. I believe in discipline. I'm not talking about killing people. Love in its purest form is discipline. I never forget one time Jody got so mad at me. Oh, what's she mad at me? She must have been 15, 16. I'll tell you one thing. I ain't listening to anything you said. I'm leaving this house. I said, good. I opened up the door and I said, get the hell out of here. She walked out, slammed the door. <laughs> she got about 20 feet and fell on the grass. Good Lord, he closed the door on me. <laughs> I opened up the door. I don't know what show, you know. I was going to run down the street and get her, you know what I mean? She goes, oh, Dad. I said, you know, I'm not a hard taskmaster. Let me tell you what you do. You take care of your mama. If you, what a, do what your mama said. Because if she ain't happy, both of us are not happy. You know that. The dog knows that. The cat knows that. We need to know that. <laughs> it's the truth. Prove it today. Go try to move her furniture. What you doing? Oh, you paid for it. That don't mean nothing. <laughs> she came in. I said, Daddy, I'm sorry. I said, I'm sorry too. But I had to correct that. Because she probably listened to something. You know, kids are impressionable. Christians are very impressionable. Let me say it again. If you do not correct abuses, the abusers will corrupt the mind of others. Write this down. If you want to rise, and there's nothing wrong with rising, humility is the surest path to exaltation. If you want to rise, humility is the surest path to exaltation. Man, you can get up there, man. Ooh. Well, you know, Jesus had, it, it, it was an abuse factor in, in his uh, staff. They say, hey, Jesus. Now, these are the closest one to him. Uh, I'd like to sit on your left hand. And uh, uh, my brother on the right hand. You know, it's a family thing. Jesus said, if you want to be the least, uh, you want to be the best in the kingdom, but be the least. Wash somebody's feet. Well, I don't want to wash nobody's feet. Well, I don't want to do that. He had, he had to check. He said, oh, my father says that. First thing for you, out of line. So he corrected that abuse. Now, I made the other disciples pretty mad. They didn't like that. Why? Because even in Jesus, they had a little jealousy, a little envy, a little big D, trying to be the big boy. Let me say it again. If you want to rise, humility is the surest path to exaltation. In other words, you have honor and humility. They come together, they'll put you on top. They'll have you sit on the throne. And Jesus said, if you honor me, God said, if you honor me, I will honor you. But that's done through humility. Not humidity, humility. <laughs> Sometimes we get the words mixed up a little bit here. Glory. So if you want to rise, see, and I, I'm very proud of this. There's a such thing as good pride that I never tried to get to the top. Now, when I was a sinner, yes. Oh, I didn't care what I had to do to get that. Whatever. It didn't make any difference. When I got born again, I no longer recognized myself. I died. It was a good death. That man has never rose again. And he never will. You see, see, not only did I create myself, I created the casket too. I destroyed that life completely because I'm now a new creature in Christ. That's why old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Or if Satan tries to tempt me with something, I said, there hath no temptation taken me, such as common to man. I already know about that. In other words, if you don't know about it, I can understand, but he said, any temptation will come your way now. They have no temptation taking you such as common to men, but God is able to make a way of escape. So in other words, if that temptation is not common to you, then you, you could fall, but it's already common to you, so why would you fall for something that you already know about? Do you see what I'm saying? 
I couldn't help myself. Now, that's another lie. Good character is not always accompanied by good reputation. Good character is not always accompanied by good reputation. Now, diatrophies, evidently, he, he, he may have been pastor of that church. Maybe John instead of him. All of a sudden, he starts nailing John, nailing everything. He wants to throw everybody out. He wants to dominate. He's looking for notoriety. You know, and then you don't hear no more about him. I don't doubt he was a good man at one time, but that pride will get you. And, and nothing wrong with looking good, feeling good, being good. Looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good. Lewis, you know, that movie. You know, all kinds of, but when you understand, that's nothing wrong with that. I like looking good. I like when Kathy looks good. Sometimes she said, how does my hair look? It don't look good. Oh, she said, what, what? I said, but I know what looks good. Oh, you like the big hair. Well, I guess so. Well, I don't know. You know, I said, yeah, I, you know, I said, move it. She, sometimes she wanted, I don't like it so straight, look like nails. That's just me. She wears some clothes I do not like. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. You like this? No. Why don't you like it? I don't know. Well, you just don't have good taste. Don't get nasty. <laughs> don't get nasty on me. <laughs> I don't know why I don't like it. I don't like it. Well, I don't like that ensemble you put together, but I do. See, that's different with me and Kathy. If I tell her I don't like she ain't going to wear it. But if I like something and you hate it, I don't care. I'm going to walk right down the aisle. You can say, that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Keep looking, baby, because it ain't changing. And I don't mean that to be rude. You know, I wouldn't put it on if I didn't like it. Do you, does that make any sense to anybody? I mean, I, I like some hairstyles and some hairstyles I don't. I don't know why I don't like them all. I just never have studied them. I don't know. People always want to mess with my head. <laughs> Kathy said, your hair looked like a football helmet. <laughs> I've had, that's Holly back there. Just see how, I've had Holly say, you know, I'll do something with your head. No, no, no. I mean, I, she's a good hairdresser. My great friends back there, the king and queen of hairstyle right there. <laughs> Pat, he's wonderful. She said, let me do something with that hair. No. Maybe you ought to spike it. <laughs> the only thing I'd like to do in my body, if you want to know, you see this thing here? I like to get rid of this because it messes up my tie. I, gotta, I, I try to tie it. I, I tie my own skin. You know? And I don't doubt they could probably make me look different. Probably maybe, maybe look better. I don't know. Look at Kathy. She's going, No. No. Why? I like football. <laughs> I've had bugs use my hair as a runway. Vroom, they just land. <laughs> so, you remember the vice president when he had a bug on his head? <laughs> that bug was going, this is nice. I like this. Baby. <laughs> and besides, I'm getting television time. I want camera time. <laughs> Two kinds of Christians. Then I asked the question, which one are you? <laughs> oh, he knows. He knows. That, yeah. See? And if you are a little bit of the big D, change. Change the big D. Add some letters. Big D, little A, double L, A, S. That Dallas. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So you can change. You're not going to find a perfect church. I had a lady said, I am looking for a perfect church. She told me. I said, sweetheart, if you find it, don't go. Because you're going to mess it up, man. <laughs> There's nobody perfect. I was looking at, uh, let me close the day. I was looking at, uh, what do they call it? Uh, um, I, what, what, not iTunes. I, what, uh, Facebook. What's the name of them? Uh, Instagram. And the other one? YouTube. What, whoever came up with a name like that, YouTube. <laughs> and he says, then and now. Some actors. And I went, oh, Lord, what happened to her? <laughs> and I'll see some of the men, good Lord, what happened? Some of these bodybuilders. 
now. Oh, what happened? Then there's some people that just don't age. I'll give you one. That Michelle Pfeiffer. She's an actress. Then and now, and I go, she ain't holding no difference at all. Good Lord. I don't know what they do. Maybe they you buy all that cream stuff. I don't know. See, Kathy's trying to get me to use that. One time I obeyed. She said, go to Dillard's and get you some moisturizer. I said, I, I like leather. You need some moisturizer. On me on it. Come on. I said, all right. So I, I don't know where to go. Because they got everybody standing there. My product's the best. You know how it is. You know, over here. And you, you know, you got all kind of different makeup. Le Mer, Chanel, you know, all the different kinds of stuff. So I walk up to this and uh, I come to this. And, and this, it was a young man. Hi. <laughs> I said, hello. Can I help? You, you need some moisturizer. <laughs> Let me touch your face. I, you ain't touching my face, boy. <laughs> I said, you got any lava soap? You need to be exfoliated. Why are you going to spend $35 on something where well, you can take some lava soap and get your skin down to the skull? He goes, oh, let me just show you. I said, Kathy, we're going home right now. I am not doing it. Now, don't get mad at me. Don't send me no ugly letter. That's just not my cup of tea. You understand what I'm saying? I won't try to hurt nobody's feeling. I, ain't, I don't hate nobody. Hey, just not my cup of tea. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. I ain't saying nothing else. <laughs> I just ain't saying nothing else. <laughs> I'm going to be like Eli. I'm going to just chill. Hey, man. <laughs> Did I give you a hard time there last week? <laughs> Look at it. He goes, oh, man. <laughs> Did y'all land good? We crashed, but we slid good. <laughs> I really believe this church doesn't have any diatrophies. But it can happen. So let's don't believe it. Let's stay with Gaius and Demetrius. Amen. Let's stay with the Apostle John. Oh, Lord. Let's stay with Jesus. Amen. And when people walk through those doors, let's welcome them. If they're strangers, you're no longer a stranger. Thank you for coming. Don't try to dominate them. You, do you want to come to the church? You need to come to the church. You know, you know, you know, don't smother people and all that kind of stuff. You just let your light shine and let the love of God come out. And you know what? They'll find their place. They'll find their pew. <laughs> See? Look at that. If you want to find them, you'll all got your pews. Look at Linda on the second one. Uh, yeah, but I help with the ushers. <laughs> I understand. Betty, got your pew. Ron back there, observing everything. <laughs> I like Ron. He's a blessing. <laughs> Everybody got their pews, boy. Look at my man here on the front. Yep, this is it. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. I like it. It's your pew. Ain't a thing wrong with that. That's a blessing. Look at Pat and him back there. That's their pew. Only Ken can sit on that pew. I think that's, the, is that their grandson? I can't see because my television light's here. Hey, my man, boy, you don't got big, son. What, what you eating? <laughs> I want to get as tall as you. <laughs> I want to eat some of that. You, and there's nothing, you know why? Because this is your second home. I'm Jesse Duplantis, and I approve this message. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. <laughs>